this is the first time I've ever had in my career where I've had a fan racially abuse a player. Um, so for me, it was the first time, but I was well equipped to deal with it. It's easier doing it in a classroom compared to out in real life when emotions are high. Omar took his penalty, he scored, he ran off celebrating as all players do with their teammates. And then I noticed a, a lot of players coming towards one particular group of fans within the Gillingham, Gillingham area of the ground. So alarm bells are ringing to me there. Something doesn't feel quite right. So obviously I'm blasting the whistle and asking the players to move away, at which point several of the Newport players approached me saying that Omar had been racially abused. Um, so obviously then I'm, I'm getting Omar over to me to, to basically get a statement from Omar that I can use to then go to my fourth official, ensure it's recorded down, um, make the designated safety officer aware, make the police aware. And in fairness to Gillingham on the day, by the time I'd got over to speak to the fourth official and the designated safety officer, they'd already removed that fan from the ground. So what I was able to do then is go to Omar, reassure him that it was being dealt with, to work with me throughout the rest of the game. When I spoke to Omar, I thought it was really interesting. He obviously took a second penalty and he did say that you were kind of managing him then as well and just yeah. saying, look, be careful. He obviously had his interests at, yeah. at heart and that showed, yeah. I think, a bit of a human touch as well, but yeah. also common sense as well yeah. as, as a referee. What, how important was that, do you think, yeah, to manage it yeah. as it went on? The, the reason I did that is because the penalty was at the same end with the same goal and I didn't want him to celebrate within the same group of fans because there could be potential for other problems. Um, so what I did is just before Omar took his penalty, I obviously just said, just think about it. If you were to score, where you celebrate, think about what we do. And the reason I did that is just a little bit of experience just to show, look, Omar, if you score, move away from them. Don't let emotions arise high again. Let's control this game of football. And he worked really well with me on it. Is there a protocol you have to do sort of a at half time and then full time as well and then what's your communication with the managers as well at half time just as we were sort of going back onto the field of play i just had a quick conversation with omar just to to ensure he was still okay to continue the game reassuring him that it was being dealt with um, following the game i got omar and a representative from his sort of team whether that be the manager i think on this case it was actually his assistant manager just to take a full statement and the reason we do that is so that then i can then report that to the fa for a full investigation how are you trained to deal with that, first of all, when a player does report to you that they've been racially abused by a member of the, of the crowd? How are you taught to deal with that situation? Yeah, so we have a particular protocol in place that we follow. Um, there's certain steps that we go through from the moment the player lets you know about it all the way through to the full-time whistle and after. Um, so, for example, we, we take full notes of the initial description from what we've been told. We then make safety officer, the designated safety officer aware and the police aware. Um, and then what also is really important is that we reassure that player that it will be dealt with in the right way. How did you feel after the game? Did you feel emotional? Did you feel like you'd just been through something? What were your sort of yeah, overriding I think, feelings? I think it's disappointment for a player. At the end of the day, we as referees go there to referee that game of football. We don't expect anyone on that field of play to go through what Omar had to do. Um, actually, that night I had quite a lot of texts and phone calls from various different people just checking up on me to make sure that I was OK, because I think sometimes as referees, we're not seeing on how it can make us feel as well. Um, and for me, it was just ensuring Omar was OK to get through the game. I made sure my report and it could be reported to the FA, so a full investigation could take place. But for me, I, I was just doing my job, being professional as possible to ensure that the game was fully under control and Omar was OK.